But you might want to look and say, hey, this might be the year for Christopher Bell to bring home a championship. Well, there's no, definitely, yeah, there's no doubt about it. No, Christopher Bell has definitely been um, very strong all year long. But, um, you know, Cole Custer has been up there with him this year, too, and, and Tyler Raddick. Those, those are three really strong guys. And, you know, tonight when these when they start rolling, um, all those stage points, all those stage wins, all that stuff really just goes out the window. Um, you know, they 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 they've got no opportunities to make any any points up tonight. Um, you know, by and, you know through stage points and stage wins. Um, this is just an all-out first cross line type brawl. And um, while he's been strong, and maybe Joe Gibbs Grayson has played that really strong game of. Uh, um, getting Christopher Bell in position for those stage points and those stage wins that got him here at the homestead. Um, just, yeah, just that stuff just goes out the window. Just the, These guys are just going to have to run, um, get 300 miles this afternoon and um, give it everything that they can because just uh, a little mistake uh, early in the race where, you know, just for example, if Christopher Bell would have finished 12th and in the first stage, we finish first in the second stage, and you know, maybe Charles Reddick finished 12th in the second stage, and they they had mathematically uh, be close enough in points that they could go and run for a championship at the end. You know, this this kind of stuff just all goes out the window. This is just, you know, we we just kind of kind of forget about that. And yeah, he's been strong, but you know, being strong and winning, the winning stage points and stages during the year um, got you here. But you got to remember, the long game is that. You got to get across the line first tonight. Well, tonight is is all peanuts in, all chips in, and we'll see uh, what happens. Talk with us a little bit about the track at Homestead, uh, and and what is the strategy that teams, especially if you're above the line and you're competing for a championship, and and that's the other thing to talk about because and I know we talk about this every year, but it's important to reiterate, even though there's only four people, four drivers, if you will, competing for a championship and down in Homestead, there's still another field of, of teams out there that are racing for a win. And so even though, and, and, and let's also point that out, you don't have to have a win uh, to, to win the championship. So uh, you, you got a whole other field of cars out on the track racing for a win. How does and what's the strategy if you're the crew chief, if you're team owners, if you're talking to them, say, hey, go out there and race, but let's let's uh, realize that we we can't win this championship, so let's try not to prevent somebody who can win the championship, uh, whether it's through a wreck or what have you, aggressive driving, what have you. It comes a point when you say, hey, I'm not going to win the championship, and it's just bad sportsmanship for me to prevent somebody else that can win the championship from winning. Are they having those kind of conversations in the driver's meetings and what have you? Well, everybody's going to go out there and race their own race, no matter who you are, whether you're the championship four or whether you're anybody in the rest of the field. And you got to realize that, uh, you know, this championship four – uh, are just trying to get across the line, you know, one, two, three, and four. Uh, everybody else has opportunities to go out there and get stage points and collect stage wins and um, perform better at the end of the race um, because that's all points money at the end of the year. You may have a guy that's running fifth right now and a guy that's running fifth, and, and those two can make up enough points to change um, and, and and fall down to seventh or eighth, or you know that sixth place guy may move up to fifth, and that's points money at the end of the year that these guys are are running for, and you know they have their own races that they have to run, but they also are in it to to uh, to to get state uh, to get um, championship points money at the end of the year, and if that means that like Austin Hill last night, for example is faster than the championship four and can go out there and win and put himself in a position that they're going to pick up valuable points uh, and, and move them up that ladder somehow, um, you have to think that every one of these drivers are doing exactly what they have to do in their own situations. And as it comes to the close of the, the, close of the race, um, NASCAR does get to a point where they start reminding spotters and drivers that, you know, there is a championship on, on the line. There's people out there racing for that championship. And that, 
yes, you guys need to run your own race, but at the same time, be mindful to these guys that are trying to compete for this championship. And I think that's where it just does this dynamic in because, uh, you know, you just take back a couple of years where, where Carl Edwards was in this championship type deal, and we didn't know that it was going to be his last year. So, you know, you had a guy that, uh, was was just out there running for points and running for something else, and and, and Carl Edwards got knocked out of the championship four <clears throat> while he was trying to compete for that championship, and lo and behold, a couple months later, he uh, walks away from the sport and walks away from Joe Gibbs Racing, so he ended his not only a championship run that year, but he ended his career by being wrecked out by by somebody else and somebody else's incident that wasn't even running for that. So, you know, NASCAR is pretty mindful in that, that they are telling spotters and drivers that you have to remember there are other guys out here, do your thing, but try not, you know, race these guys like you would want them to race you, but don't go out there and try and create an incident where it may cause one of these championship four drivers um, to uh, be caught up into something unintentionally. Well, here we got who's, who, who we know is competing for the championship. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. They came out of nowhere. Denny Hamilton, uh, Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., and Kyle Busch, all familiar names, all familiar faces, except for one in the championship hunt, and that's Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin, uh, I feel like, deserves this. He's had this this ups and flows of a career. He deserves a championship, and he's ranked number one. Uh, go out there, race, and, and, and just uh, rack up the points uh, and win this championship. Denny Hamlin, what are your thoughts? Well, like, I kind of compare Danny Hamlin to Mark Martin in a lot of ways. That, um, you know, Mark Martin went out there and could win races and perform and do things that other people, and, and have this up and up and down kind of career where Mark Martin was at the high of the highs and the low of the lows, and Hamlin's been that way. And you know, there's always been rumors every year that hey, he's out of the car and. He doesn't win, and he doesn't do this, and Denny Hamlin comes back and does things, and, you know, we saw that last year where he didn't win a race for the first time uh, in a season since he had started in the Cup Series. This year, he comes back and wins the Daytona 500, and he proceeds to win five more races throughout the year, so he's really going to put himself in a position where those naysayers have said, oh, well, you know, Denny Hamlin's in, in the, you know, possibly going to lose that ride. Um, then he goes to Texas a couple of weeks ago, has an issue there, spins the car out, gets it turned around, gets it damaged, but then claws his way back and is able to come back and, uh, you know, get into this championship. So, you know, in, in, a, in a lot of ways, you, you see the same things that Mark, what happened to Mark Martin happening to Denny Hamlin. And, um, you know, if Denny Hamlin never wins the championship, he should relish in the fact that that uh, People put him in the category of Mark Martin, and, you know, Mark never won a championship in this sport, but people uh, respect the career that he did have and probably said that he's one of the greatest drivers out there that never won a championship. So for them to be put in that same category, uh, even if he doesn't win tonight, even if he doesn't win next year or by the end of his career, just the people and Mark and everybody saying that you're in that kind of caliber category, um, that's a lot to, to even think about just, you know, to be put in kind of that category, too. Now, uh, he's strong. You know, these mile-and-a-half racetracks, um, you know, he's, uh, he, he may play into him tonight, but, you know, you, you also have other drivers out there. The other three are, well, previous champions, and these guys have won at Homestead before. So, uh, but, you know, it's going to be a tough battle tomorrow, but it, when it comes, I still think that when Denny Hill come back to Denny, he's from my state of Virginia, even if he doesn't win, I think just as many people said, he's in the same kind of caliber as Mark Martin as far as one of the greatest drivers that may or may not win a championship throughout his career. Let's talk real quickly about our rookie class of 2019. Uh, first of all, who do you think is going to get rookie of the year, and, and what are your thoughts about this year's rookies in the, the NASCAR series? Well, um, you know, I, I know Tift is out. Tift has, you know, had his medical issues, so he's had to bow out of this thing and isn't in the car. So um, it, it really just comes down, you know, to just a handful, a couple guys here. What's 
what I think is really spectacular is when you start looking to next year, and you've got Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, and um, Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, and Cole Custer. All three guys that are racing for the championship this afternoon are going to be in Cup cars next year, and I'm going to be pre it's going to be pretty impressive to watch these three next year. That's three different manufacturers, three different drivers that are going to go for the rookie of the year title. Um, not not to try and change, change the subject after 2019, but really I think when we start looking to the future of 2020 and and, and the drivers that we're going to have with, with Bell, Custer, and Reddick, uh, I think next year's championship is really just going to be something to watch between all of them. As for my pick um, this year um, for rookie of, rookie of the year, um, I I I think it, I think it's uh, Daniel Hemrick, but I I don't, I don't even remember without looking. I, I'm sure you probably know, but uh, I think it's going to be Daniel Hemrick. Yeah, I think I, you're totally you're totally right on that. Uh, by far. Uh, real quickly here, while we got you uh, for the rest of the season here in 2019, before we uh, send you off into your your off season, if you will, uh, let's take a look at 2019 uh, NASCAR series. The ups and downs. Uh, give us the uh, Speedway Digest uh, 2019 NASCAR report card. Um, I think a lot of people have acknowledged the fact that the the short track and the and the road courses will need help in 2020. Um, what that how that help comes in, I'm not sure. Um, NASCAR really doesn't want to approve more parts and more pieces, especially going to a new car in 2021. But, you know, I think after we saw what happened at Phoenix last week, what happened at Martinsville and Richmond and Watkins Glen, um, hopefully, I, th I think NASCAR uh, is going to look at maybe some kind of tweak out there. So in that aspect, I think NASCAR, you know, um, you know, didn't hit the mark on that one. But this new package that they brought to the mile and a half racetrack, I think it, it it not only hit the mark, but it exceeded the mark because we saw closer competition on these mile and a half racetracks where we where we we would see drivers eight, nine, seven, six, five seconds ahead of the pack, clean air with King, nobody could pass anybody. Um, so I I think in that regard. Um, Yes, they, they not only hit the mark, but they exceeded the mark, but there is still work to do, and I think NASCAR is acknowledging that work is still left on these uh, short tracks and road courses, and hopefully by 2020, by the time we get back, I know that they've already put out their rules for 2020, so they're going to keep the same package, but I think even they, they're acknowledging after what we saw at Phoenix last week in a mile racetrack where you had, uh, you know, seven cars on the, on the track, and a uh, and a leader nine, ten seconds ahead of second place, and uh, even drivers like Denny Hamlin and uh, Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex, and uh, um, litany of drivers that went out there and said, "Look, you, you just can't pass. There's just uh, it's impossible to pass here. You you just can't get to anybody. You can't get anywhere." And I think in that aspect, I think again, that's where we think NASCAR will probably look into 2020 and see what they can do to make a small tweak at least until they get the 2021 car. So. Um, those are my takeaways from this season. Sure. It's been an exciting season already, and I'm hoping that we see even more exciting racing in 2020. Absolutely. Steve Wilson of Speedway Digest, we appreciate you joining us uh, for another year of NASCAR. We're going to send you off uh, to the off season. Enjoy your day uh, weekend down there in South Florida. I'm envious of you, and we'll stay in touch with you, and we'll have you on as things merit. But uh, hope you have a good championship race down there in South Florida. And uh, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, we'll see you again next year, sir. Thanks a lot. Talk to you next year. Yeah. Steve Wilson of Speedway Digest. Uh, check them out at speedwaydigest.com. All right, guys, uh, we didn't have IndyCar because IndyCar is kind of in uh, the funny season, but we do have a racing update uh, from Matthew Embry that he, that he sent over to us. We'll do that. We'll go into a break. And coming up on the other side – Mo from the BS Sports Show, Ed Kratz, beat writer for the Philadelphia Eagles, SI.com, our official NFL contributor. We're going to continue this conversation, brawl, the brawl and the pound. Talk about it, get the points of view of that, of course, walk around the NFL. Uh, coming up now, though, uh, Matthew Embry are doing our weekly IndyCar funny season race update, and then we'll go into a break, and we'll be back right here on the Balance Radio Network.
Well, Tom, obviously big news in the ECR camp with Spencer Piggott now, likely not 